Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hop Gazette, here with the next video, and this one is a defensive video, gonna be a very quick one. I just wanna share some tips for base building. Specifically, this video is talking about six common mistakes I see in base building across all town hall levels, town hall nine, 10, and 11. Some of them are universal, they apply to pretty much any level base. Some of them are specific to certain town hall levels, but regardless, I think you guys are gonna have at least one uh, tip that you can take away and you can use in your base building, the next base you build. Um, one thing you know to avoid from this video. So let's get right into it with the first one here. Number one, that is, especially at Town Hall 10, still using your skeleton traps on air. And using air skellies is no longer a good option at Town Hall 10 because the ground skellies are so important for killing miners. Miners have become a very popular strategy, probably the most popular strategy at Town Hall 10 right now. Um, they're the most successful from what I've seen. And miners are so, or skeletons are so good at killing miners when they're set to ground because the miners have to take out each individual skeleton, then go back underground, um, come back up for the next skeleton. It takes so long. And if you put them by an inferno tower, the inferno tower will be locked onto the miners. There'll be other defenses raining in. It's just a very good way to kill miners. So at Town Hall 10, it's a no brainer. You have to put them on ground. Um, at Town Hall 9, I'd say there's a little bit more of an option because obviously miners aren't really a thing at Town Hall 9 because you don't have them yet besides the CC I guess you can bring. Um, but still, I would say the default should be ground because they're good at killing hogs um, at Town Hall 9. And also, pretty much every attack uses some sort of ground-based kill squad, I would say. Um, and a lot more attacks are exclusively ground attacks than exclusively air attacks. So that way you know that you're not going to completely waste your uh, air skeletons if the attack is all ground um, by putting them on air. So if you put them on ground, you have a better chance of them at least doing something for you. And I think um, regardless of that, they're better um, just at killing hogs than they are at killing balloons in other air troops. So I'd put them on ground in almost all bases, um, especially at Town Hall 10, at least right now at this point in the game. Um, the next one is the air sweepers. Now you want to be careful. This one um, can apply to pretty much every town hall level. Uh, not quite as a glaring offense as putting air skellies in some bases, but it still can hurt your base. If you have your uh, air sweepers that um, can reach too far outside the base, what that will do is it'll push healers away on a queen walk and keep them out of range of an air defense. So if there's a part of your base that looks like it might be queen walked and you have an air defense guarding that area, that's just out of range of the queen. It's deep enough inside the base that the queen can't reach it, um, but it's close enough that it can possibly reach the healers as she wraps around. That's a very good way to defend the queen walk, and you can compromise that if your air sweeper is um, reaching far enough beyond the wall that it will push the healers back and keep them out of range of the air defense. That can open up a lot of queen walks that you don't want to happen on your base. So make sure um, your air sweepers aren't extending too far beyond the base in places that might get queen walked. It's often a good idea to have them pointing. If you have one on either side of the core, have them pointing at each other so they cover each other's backs and they're covering the inside of the base and really not extending beyond the outside, uh, beyond those walls. Um, the next one, number three, is having a air defense at Town Hall 10 or Town Hall 11 even that can be bowler bounced. And what I mean by bowler bounced is I guess on this base, um, as this attack goes, uh, you see this air defense at the bottom here. This air defense could be bowler bounced. Now that doesn't matter because it's a Town Hall 9 base, but if this was a Town Hall 10 base, it would be at risk for sure because basically a bowler can snipe the defense or the trash building next to it and it has enough hit points that the bowler will take out the air defense before it takes out the building it's actually being targeted. So the air defense will be taken out for an investment of six troop space, which is a really bad thing if you're the defender because that's such a small investment for an entire air defense. It can really weaken the base for an air attack. So make sure that your uh, air defense, if it's like on the outer layer of the base like this one is, it's not, um, either there's defenses covering it um, or the buildings next to it are like builder's huts or army camps or low hit points, or the trash buildings are configured in a way that the bowlers can't get their second bounce on the air defense, 
one of those three things because you don't want to have your air your air defenses uh, get bowler bounced because that will put your base in a bad position for defending air attacks. Okay, uh, moving on to the next one here, um, and also the next attack here. Uh, oftentimes, people will put giant bombs and spring traps on the outside of the base um, at Town Hall 9 and Town Hall 10 to defend witches that walk around. Um, Town Hall 10, we have the witch bowler composition, which is very powerful. Town Hall 9, just that mass witch attack, like the witch slapper, whatever it's called. So both of those involve witches walking around the base. So people put those traps to try to kill them. But oftentimes what that'll do is it will take away valuable defenses for defending hogs and other types of uh, ground-based armies. So you want to... Um, you want to make sure you can defend both simultaneously. You're not going to weaken your base by putting the giant bombs or the spring traps on the outside. So what I like to do is put a Tesla or a mortar right by those traps. So that way hogs will still have to go in that area. They'll still hit those traps most likely, unless it gets taken out by a kill squad, but usually uh, it won't. So you want to make sure that those traps aren't going to be wasted. You have a defense to draw the hogs over. Um, the giant bombs is pretty easy because it covers a pretty big range. So as long as the, there's, there's a defense right next to the, to the giant bomb, you should be fine. Spring traps can be a little bit more tricky. So oftentimes I'll use a mortar and I'll have it one tile away from the wall. So one tile between the mortar and the wall. And I'll put the spring trap behind it with a defense right on the other side of the wall. So if the hogs are dropped on that mortar, they'll take out the mortar, but then they'll hit the spring trap before they jump the wall, which will um, be a good way to make sure you defend hogs. Um, you're still you know, able to defend the witches, which is your main priority, but also if they use hogs, you still have a good defense. You're not compromising your base to defend against hogs. Okay, number five here is a little bit more specific to Town Hall 9 mainly, I'd say. Uh, could work for Town Hall 10, but mainly Town Hall 9. Having an air defense that's close to an offset queen, a little bit specific, but one problem is if there's an air defense near the queen, especially when she's offset to one side of the base, um, what it'll do is it'll give them an anchor point in an air attack to drop a lava hound there, and that way they can use a skeleton spell to kill the queen. So a lot of times, you know, you're going to put your queen on one side of the base and a lot of your wizard towers and um, Teslas, Expos or Archer Towers or whatever on the other side. So you are splitting up your air uh, targeting defenses and queen and splitting those up to best defend against air. But if there's an air defense near your queen, even just one of them, it gives them a good anchor point to drop a lava hound. So it'll tank your queen while they take out your queen with a skeleton spell. So if you're going to use an offset queen, keep the air defenses away, not just to defend against a kill squad, but also to defend against the, uh, the skeleton spell. Um, because people can get some great value with a kill squad on the other side of the base and then just save a skelly spell for your queen and that'll be it gg so avoid doing that um for sure at town hall nine <clears throat> okay last one here uh, before i wrap up the video is going to be if you have a small cc i mean like baby dragon valk anything but like a lava hound or a golem or something like that even a pekka maybe don't make it lurable it just it's too easy um, if you have a small CC like that, people are going to want to lure it and take it out with a queen at some point in her walk if they're able to. So try to make it so the clan castle is in the middle of the base somewhat and they at least have to invest a good 10-15 troop space if they want to lure the CC. Now if you have a lava hound or a balloon, those are tricky when they're lured out because they take so much time and um, you can allow those to be lured out much easier. So you can do an offset clan castle if you have those troops. But if you have like a Valk, Baby Dragon, Wizard, Minion type CC, uh, Goblins, whatever it is, a small CC like that, I'd put it in the middle of your base, uh, Town Hall 9 and Town Hall 10, to try to defend against a, a lure and having it taken out by the Queen on her walk. So that's my advice. Hope it helped you guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any more tips or more things to avoid that you can give advice to other viewers. Put those in the comments below if you have them. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bisectatron out.